Uh, hi guys, uh, thanks for being here. So this is the uh, last session of uh, today's agenda and you guys are the true friend of the open source community. So my name is Eric, uh, I'm from Pencil ML. So if you have attended the keynote uh, this morning, you guys may know uh, my colleague Fogg. Uh, she has uh, introduced Pencil ML uh, as a product like what we are offering today. And for today's uh, session that uh, I will try to uh, bring, take you guys back and uh, a little bit of history of where we came from. So uh, a little bit of myself. So I'm uh, Eric, I'm helping Bento ML's expansion in the APAC region and also in charge of the global partnerships. In the meanwhile, I'm a true believer of open source. So I'm involved in the Kubeflow community specific, uh, working with Dan uh, on the KServe, the serving uh, work group. So before uh, Bento ML, I was with Cloudflare for six years. Uh, I helped Cloudflare establish uh, their China business, and before that, I attended Craigie Mullen uh, University. So th this is my WeChat and my LinkedIn. Feel free to add me. Cool. So um, uh, we are. Let's take back to uh, 20 me, uh, 2010, like 2015, 2016, and. Uh, uh, our CEO uh, and uh, uh, co-founder uh, Chao Yu Yang, uh, he's an uh, early Databricks engineer. He's uh, the first uh, part-time uh, PM of the MLflow uh, project. Uh, when he helped uh, his customers, for example, like Rare Games and Capital One, uh, back then, uh, he discovered there are a lot of um, conflicts uh, if you want to take your machine learning models uh, into uh, production. For example, there are different uh, personas and different uh, uh, roles involved into this uh, process. For example, you have your data scientists uh, want to train the models, but before that you need data engineers to do all the ETL stuff to clean the data. And after that, uh, the data scientist needs to ask the ML engineer to uh, take the models into uh, a callable web service and API, and then the ML engineers need to talk to the DevOps engineer to make sure the service is reliable and uh, scalable. And in the meantime, the, the PM wants to access uh, uh, the data uh, of the machine learning services. Uh, and in the meantime, there are a lot of uh, moving parts of the service. For example, uh, some of the, the batch uh, uh, jobs needs to be integrated with uh, the batch pipeline and also in terms of the CI CD stuff. The machine learning is a little bit different. It's not just like uh, code and it also has data and models. It, it's a little bit of chaos. Uh, even for Array Games and Capital One, uh, they have uh, 20 to 30 engineers within their ML uh, organizations. It's still hard. They need help from Databricks and uh, experienced uh, engineers and PM like our founder. So uh, back to like uh, 2016 and 2015, uh, there is a new uh, paradigms or new concept called uh, ML Ops. And ML Ops uh, is trying to address the issue that uh, uh, Chao Yu experienced with uh, uh, his uh, users like Array Games and Capital One, they want to help to make sure the machine learning assets are treated as uh, other software assets, for example, like code uh, within a CI/CD environment. So in order to do that, uh, there are different kind of tools, concepts, and also steps that a guy invented uh, during that period. And uh, most importantly, uh, those tools and concepts want to achieve is trying to uh, make the asset, machine learning assets versionable, uh, testable, and also make sure that you can uh, automate the process and make it uh, reproducible. So uh, after that, uh, Chao Yu, uh, our co-founder, wants to focus on uh, model inference. So within the model inference, uh, they are not only, uh, the model is only small, part of uh, the process. You also need to figure out how to do your pre-processing uh, of the data and also post-processing of your data. So if you, you are using a 
streaming architecture, you also need to figure out how to do the uh, feature transformations, and also if you have a lot of different business logic, you need to know how to incorporate your uh, business logic into the model inference process. So uh, when we start the project, we interview different uh, users uh, using different solutions, and every company has their own implementations, and we divide it into this uh, implementation in into two dimensions. The first dimension is ease of use, and the second dimension is flexibilities. So in terms of ease of use, the most straightforward solutions is the off-shelf solutions that offered by the machine learning training framework. For example, like a TensorFlow has TensorFlow Serve, and uh, uh, PyTorch has Torch Serve, and uh, uh, even for NVIDIA, they have the Triton Inference uh, servers. So the, the, the advantage of uh, this kind of off-shelf solutions is uh, uh, it can easily get used or get started by a solo data scientist, and also because uh, those, uh, for example, TensorFlow serving is specialized to serve uh, the TensorFlow runtime. You can have uh, a comparably better uh, serving results. But the questions come to the, the, the disadvantage of these uh, uh, off-shell solutions. Specifically is uh, uh, when your uh, machine learning organizations grow, different types of uh, uh, machine learning use cases may require different types of uh, training framework. And uh, different of uh, use cases or workflows might need uh, multiple models to work together. So let's uh, summarize the disadvantage, then you will know if you're experiencing this pain. It's if you use only the off-shelf solutions, uh, you will need to get stuck with their configurations. And also, it's not uh, flexible to customize and uh, not very easy to work with different like other uh, training frameworks. And uh, another trend that we have seen in the past is like a, a, a technology forward company has a software engineering team. And most likely, they like to build their own uh, in-house solutions. So uh, the advantage of the in-house solutions is very flexible. And uh, it can adapt to different frameworks. And most likely, it's going to be adapt to that specific company's uh, infrastructure. But it comes with uh, disadvantages as well. For example, not every company, especially not every non-technology company, has the engineering resources or can hire the engineer that who knows how to build this type of infrastructure. And more importantly, even you have that resources, you will cost you at least six months to nine months to implement. But uh, for a CEO or executive team, that's a lost opportunity or lost money in terms of uh, those uh, AI uh, applications. And also, uh, mo for traditional ML, most of the organization starts with a uh, data team. For example, data engineers and data scientists. Uh, it's a, a skill set mismatch because those uh, data scientists mostly ca came from uh, uh, statics or mathematics background. They will need, to tie need time to learn those uh, DevOps or engineering uh, expertise to move forward. So after I interviewed all those uh, users and uh, uh, all those uh, use cases, so this is what we have dreamed before. And uh, uh, most importantly is um, the solution that uh, we see is we're trying to be uh, flexible and uh, easy to use. The first is we decide uh, to use Python in, in, instead of uh, declarative YAMLs. Uh, we felt that's a natural language and natural progressions for data scientists to move forward to the next step uh, from training to uh, inference. And also we have uh, opt optimized different runtime and hardware to make sure that um, the workload can uh, scale and also can work for different framework and different environment. And most likely, uh, and, and more importantly, that uh, for development uh, destinations, we are agnostic in that part. So no matter you are on different cloud providers or you are on uh, 
on-premise deployment, we can support, and also no matter you are using uh, batch inference or you want to do it online inference, we uh, need to uh, support that as well. So here comes Ubuntu ML. So we are an open source uh, AI application framework. Uh, like I uh, introduced before, uh, we support different uh, data science labs and also ML frameworks. And this works best if you have a larger or comparably larger uh, data science data team and you have various of uh, uh, machine learning use cases, you need PyTorch, you need uh, SKLearn, you need uh, transformers even, uh, we all support. And also we support REST API and gRPC. Uh, you can uh, abstract your business logic uh, into different um, uh, uh, implementations and into our API servers. And also uh, for our model runner, uh, we have abstract uh, as a, uh, to support different uh, uh, runtime as well, for example, Onyx and NVIDIA uh, Triton. And uh, uh, for online inference, streaming, batch scoring, we all support. Uh, most likely what I want to emphasize is the, the powerful runner architecture that we uh, design. Uh, for example, uh, if you have a machine learning workflow and you have a uh, unique different models uh, within the same use cases, you can abstract the pre-processing and post-processing logic into the API server and uh, uh, make sure the uh, uh, machine learning uh, heavy uh, logic uh, reside into the runner and also we can have a distributed way to uh, distribute the API server to run on a CPU cluster and those uh, compute intensive uh, workload into the, the GPU clusters. Uh, in, in the uh, uh, current environment, the GPU is very uh, hard to get, so it works well for our users. So uh, right now, uh, Bento ML is uh, uh, 3,000 community members strong, and we're serving like billions of predictions per day. Uh, uh, over a thousand of organizations uh, are using us in their production environment. So one of uh, the uh, user stories that we really like is uh, Shingen from Porsche. So before uh, uh, Bento ML, uh, he's the only MLE within his team. Uh, if his manager asks him to uh, put a uh, machine learning models into production, you take him uh, eight weeks. But after he used Bento ML, he just need uh, three days. So if you have a small, no matter if you have a small uh, data uh, science team and you have a larger, uh, larger data science team, uh, Bento ML is really your uh, good friend. So uh, in terms of uh, Asia expansions, and with the open source community, you really need a champion to get to a uh, different market. For example, uh, Mr. Kim is an uh, engineer from Line. He discovered Bento ML back in 2019, and um, he started to leverage uh, Bento ML to build uh, the, uh, they call ML universe within Line. And after one year's uh, development, uh, Bento ML are supporting at least uh, three different use cases uh, within uh, the line uh, app and the line organizations. And uh, moreover, after a year and uh, uh, a half later, I think we discovered that uh, uh, Mr. Lee, he doesn't work in the same group of line because line is very big organizations. He works within the line financials. He's also using line uh, he's also using Bento IML uh, within their uh, machine learning team, and uh, the use cases is to uh, calculate calculate cr uh, credit score. And uh, with uh, our Cre South Korean community growing, uh, where we got into a lot of uh, different uh, internet companies uh, within South Korea, and then it comes to our uh, friend neighbor. Uh, so Naver is uh, the largest search engine and most uh, visited website uh, in Korea. They have uh, uh, 6,000 employees and uh, their HQ is in uh, uh, the South uh, Korea Seoul. And uh, uh, in terms of market cap, they are also the largest uh, company as well. So here comes to uh, our friend, 
Mr. Kim. So he is a uh, 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 open source uh, contributors, and he has uh, prepared a short video to discuss why never pick uh, Bento ML, and there's nothing more, uh, more, more stronger than uh, the statement come from uh, the user themselves. So please uh, take a look. Engineer working at the team which named the AI serving dev and neighbor. I'll introduce Bento ML usage in my team. In neighbor, each team select and use many framework according to their situation, and my team use Bento ML. Uh, in this section, I'm going to talk about how I use Bento ML and why I use Bento ML. First, Bento ML is uh, simple to deploy. Uh, we just make a Bento file jump dot yaml and execute Bento build command, and Bento was built, and we just execute command Bento ML containerize. That's all. Uh, we can retrieve container image which can be deployed more than serving. As you can see, this picture is very simple. Uh, I think it's a really powerful picture, automatic container lines. Uh, then, why does not uh, recommend Pest API or Plask? Uh, someone say Pest API is good choice to model serving, but I believe it's not a good choice. Typically, ML serving support a uh, picture that multi-threading for model inference. Uh, or like a deploy mode model, like a touch script. Because of this, uh, it is more efficient only to deploy the single process inference worker. But Pest API, it is a web framework. Uh, it does not consider about this multi-threading. So if you serve the model with Pest API without any concern, uh, Pest API will deploy model multiprocessing structure with Unicorn or Gunicorn. But Pest Bento ML is model serving framework. Uh, Bento ML use only one process during development mode. But when the production mode, Bento ML deploy inference worker, aka learner, as a single process, uh, and runner communicate with the multi uh, API server with poked multi process. Of course, you can configure this option. Uh, you can spawn more inference worker process. Just modify configure option. Uh, especially need when deploy runner with multi GPU. Uh, you can see the more detail in this document section. Uh, resource scheduling strategy. When you're serving lightweight uh, model, uh, the overhead from process to process communication can much slower than model's inference calculation. Um, in this case, multiprocessing architecture can be more fast. Uh, if you just set embedded true option to runner, uh, you can you can easily uh, switch the deployment strategy. Uh, I also use this strategy per some model. Data distributed inference. Um, this strategy involves spawned two or more same runner and then distribute inference request between them. This strategy has more efficient in Kubernetes with like Yatai. Each runner uh, is deployed in independently. Uh, this approach, approach can effic efficiently improve the performance of the model server, especially for the inference request with a large batch size. Uh, the data distributed learner looks like uh, this picture. Uh, when request uh, with row size 200, uh, each two runner calculate 100. Um, and if you want more boost latency, uh, we just spawn more runner and distribute inference batch size. Uh, 
when you use this strategy with Bento ML, uh, there is only few code change. That's it. Uh, if you manage ML serving now, uh, you know that uh, about the almost inference request is not kind. It's uh, not pretty tensor. Uh, there is a uh, many request format. And there is, uh, there is uh, that means we need to pre-processing before model inference. Uh, in this case, Bento ML can make easy to pre-processing logic with Python. Um, let's compare the deployment strategy with Bento ML and other framework. First, level one. Uh, there is a two-way REST API serving or embedded learner Bento ML serving. It's a simple and same. Uh, and next, level two. Uh, you need to switch framework into Triton or TensorFlow serving or Touch serving, but Bento ML also supports this level. And level three, uh, this level added pre-processing or feature store connection. In this case, you need to test API or other server tool with pre-processing logic, but Bento ML still supports this level. Level four. In this case, you would to use model serving platform KSERV, like a KSERV. Uh, KSERV version 2 transformer made by Past API and Pento ML can deploy with Yatai. Um, and when you, you when you install Pento ML Triton Extra option, uh, you can switch the runner to Triton Impulse Server. Pento uh, ML and Triton Impulse Server is not a replacement for each other. Uh, they are co-worker relationship, uh, and our teams are current use level three. That's all. Uh, in this section, I talk about why we use Bento ML and how we use Bento ML. Uh, thank you for watching this section. My name is Sungyeol Kim, and it's been a pleasure sharing my usage. Uh, have a good conference. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Song Yeol Kim, and I'm a M Okay, so let's continue. Um, uh, here's a little bit of recap, like uh, deal production scale model serving uh, solutions. First, it should be uh, uh, used to customize business logic and also uh, infrastructure, uh, inference graph. Uh, preferably in Python, which is uh, uh, the data scientist uh, natural programming language. And also, uh, ideal solution should be optimize uh, the runtime and the hardware to allow uh, independent uh, auto scaling. So that's why we created the render architecture and the API server. So last, it must support different deploy environment without writing uh, single lines of the code. Cool. So we uh, have talked a little bit on the traditional ML and now it's 2023 and uh, what's coming next? So uh, I think uh, we all know with the uh, ChatGPT uh, release last uh, November and there are a lot of uh, movement on the foundation models, especially on the large language model side. Uh, the rise of open source uh, 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 large language models are really a phenomenon. So we have uh, Llama, uh, Falcon, uh, even Llama 2 uh, on the, in the US or outside of China. And also within China, uh, we have uh, ChatGRM, we have uh, Baichuan, and I think uh, uh, the, uh, the Alibaba team released uh, Chenmen's uh, open source models uh, as well. However, uh, same with uh, the traditional ML, there are different challenges uh, for the developers to productionize uh, large anchor models. The first is uh, about the large language model's quality. Is this good enough to generate a good response? And uh, we have seen uh, different use cases, especially for fine-tuned vertical uh, models. It actually uh, is comparable with uh, GPT-3 
uh, 3.5 or even GPT-4 in some, some cases. And the second is the operability, uh, is the uh, large language model can be uh, integrated with your existing uh, infrastructures and also your especially hardware uh, GPU environment. And uh, the third is the throughput. Uh, in terms of uh, concurrencies, uh, can you guys or, or can the uh, engineering team to produce a good enough throughput to uh, lower the cost and also uh, get a better uh, a response? And the fourth is uh, latency uh, for API costs and is this good enough uh, to uh, human users to, uh, for the first several responses and tokens, is this good enough uh, for the real users. And uh, more importantly, uh, for uh, large entry models, if I want to put it into our productions, uh, can I afford the cost? So here is OpenLML. OpenLML is an open source platform that we designed to facilitate the deployment and operations of large language models. So in order to address those four pillars that uh, I discussed before, uh, we support almost all the open source uh, in terms of quality. Why so, uh, we support in terms of all the open source large language models and for operabilities, uh, we support the quantizations. You can do uh, even A-B quantizations with OpenLM, and also we support uh, model parallelism as well. For throughput, we have a GPU-specific optimizations, uh, especially with CUDA, and also uh, we uh, have support continuous batching uh, to increase the throughput as well. And in, uh, what we use is a token streaming to uh, address uh, the license issue of the production uh, large language model. So. Uh, with production large language models, the ML ops challenges didn't went away. So that's why within uh, OpenLM, uh, OpenLM, all the advantages that you have seen that I have talked about with Bento ML are uh, fully baked in. For example, uh, it's customizable with Python. You can version control the Bentos and the models. Uh, it's all OCI compliant. Uh, compliant and also uh, it support real-time inference and batch infer uh, inference. You can uh, switch uh, different uh, uh, deployment destinations without changing uh, the code. So lastly, uh, we have uh, built a, a, a platform as service called Bento uh, Cloud. Uh, this is uh, a serverless uh, uh, product uh, of, of uh, the company and um, it can be uh, scaled to zero and it can scale up and it support all the good things with uh, Bento ML uh, as well. More importantly is uh, uh, distribute uh, the deployment versions and it's currently in private beta. Please feel free to sign up on Willis. And uh, that will be all. Thank you guys. Uh, please find uh, Bento ML and Open ML. Uh, open LM, LM on GitHub and start us. And uh, at the bottom is uh, my WeChat and my LinkedIn. And uh, right now uh, we're open to questions. Uh, 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 在构建这个产品的时候的话，我们主要还是focus在刚才说的那两个persona。当然的话，因为我们的下游的话是DevOps的engineer，我们在设计的时候也会去呃咨询这种DevOps service。
。好的，感感谢大家，然后这个非常感谢大家留到最后，谢谢。